Hello everyone! In this video I will focus on the role of different psychological processes that play an important role when people deal with comments and start to negotiate their contributions to and the distribution of resources from comments. Specifically I would like to talk about the role of social identity, communication and trust. So let's start with the role of social identities. Numerous studies in the field of social psychology suggest that our identities play a very crucial role when it comes to cooperation. Social identity is the individual's self-concept that is derived from his or her perceived membership in a certain social group. In other words, it is an individual-based perception of what defines the us associated with any internalized group membership. The common in-group identity model is a theoretical approach proposed by Samuel Gardner and Jack Dovidio. This model outlines the processes through which cooperation within and between groups can be increased by means of creating specific social identities. Derived from the social identity approach, the common in-group identity model is rooted in the process of social categorization. It describes how cooperation can be increased if members of different groups can be induced to see themselves as part of the same group. If people perceive themselves as part of the same group, they tend to trust each other. As you will see, trust is a very important psychological process that helps you and others to improve cooperation in your commons projects. Another very important psychological mechanism to foster cooperation is communication. By definition, negotiations always involve communication. Specifically, negotiation is communication in the face of conflicting interests with the ultimate goal to solve the social conflict at hand. As a matter of fact, whenever people socially interact, as it is in the case of negotiations, they inevitably communicate. As pointed out by the very famous psychologist Paul Watzlawick, you cannot not communicate. Whenever you enter a room, even a virtual one, and even if you say nothing, you still communicate, at least non-verbally. And there's another important fact about communications. The content of a message is not always the obvious one. So how we say something, meaning our non-verbal communication, makes a big difference. Aside from the facts that are conveyed through communication, we simultaneously and unconsciously transmit information about the relationship between ourselves and the recipients of our messages. And that is something that is highly important for the process of conflict resolution. We use communication to create social relationships. As such, it has an enormous impact on the negotiation process, for example, on how ready we are to make concessions. For instance, think about a situation at the market where you negotiate with the market woman on the price of two pounds of oranges. The market woman can communicate two different types of proposals. For instance, the woman could say, I demand three euros for two pounds of oranges. However, she could also propose, I offer you two pounds of oranges for three euros. Although both proposals are identical on an objective level, they differ a lot in terms of the way they are communicated. And think about this. Would you be more resistant to concede when you receive a demand or an offer? But how do we create a relationship with others that enables us to attain mutual satisfying and sustainable agreements? One very crucial aspect in both commons projects and negotiations is the level of trust that we can reach in our relationship with others. In the context of negotiation research, Dean Pruitt and Peter Carnevale define trust as a variety of perceptions, including the belief that the other party is expected to cooperate, is motivated to coordinate and is open-minded and prepared to engage in earnest and constructive problem-solving. Thus, when trust of this sort is present, the presumption is that one party is ready to engage in cooperative behavior if the other party manifests a similar readiness. There are several ways to build trust 
through the process of negotiations. For instance, people can establish trust when they reveal their needs, motives and interests to others. Another way to build trust through nonverbal communication is mimicry. Mimicry is defined as unconscious or automatic imitation of gestures, behaviors, facial expressions, speech or movements. Whenever we signal others that we put ourselves in their shoes, it will increase the level of trust. Another means to increase trust is humor. Humor promotes closer social interaction and cohesiveness between people. Humor is often found when people already know each other, but it is also a very good icebreaker in order to create a positive relationship before starting a negotiation. And research has shown that humor is particularly helpful when starting email negotiations. As you will notice in assignment 2 and later on in this course, a trustful relationship not only helps you to create and maintain comments, but it is the most relevant facilitator in negotiations to reach sustainable agreements. You will find many interesting readings in the library on how to create trustful relationships and how communication, social identities or perspective taking can help you to reach sustainability both in negotiations and commons projects.